On my very first video, I got a comment asking about getting CG clients, getting clients that'll pay you to do 3D work. And I haven't quite fleshed out all of my thoughts about that and what exactly I want to put in a full video about that. Uh, that will be coming, but today I wanted to kind of put one piece of a small part of it together um, and just say that one of the things that gets you hired a lot is uh, the ability to work efficiently and to have deep libraries of assets. So that's why I talk so much about uh, files and building asset libraries and using the asset browser and stuff like that is because that is one of the things that gets you hired a lot. And so the more you can be efficient, not only in your processes, but also with, you know, having things on hand to use that you don't have to scour the internet for for hours is a very useful thing. And so today I want to uh, add one more incremental piece to that in creating saved lighting asset libraries. So this is gonna allow you to create whole lighting setups, kind of similar to the Grayscale Gorilla Light Kit browser. Uh, and you'll just be able to take lighting setups that you use frequently and save them so that you never have to use them again. And since we use the Cinema 4D Asset Browser to do this, it will pull all of the assets into uh, whatever folder you specify to be your asset library. So this is the kind of thing where you can pull it into your asset library and then you can go and edit files and do whatever, move them around. It doesn't matter because Cinema 4D has already pulled them, copied them essentially into another location. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Uh, it's a very useful tool and I just wanna introduce you to it. So let's go ahead and get started. So this video is gonna start where a lot of my others do in the asset browser of Cinema 4D. So if we wanna come up here to window and we can open up our asset browser or you can use shift F8, which is the default hotkey to do so, you can see that we have a lot of different assets that Cinema 4D has created for us. And if you don't have this set up, uh, come into edit preferences and then come over to uh, asset browser and then just add a folder here where you want Cinema 4D to pull different assets that you're gonna save for your workflow. Um, I realize that I have not done a full video on the Cinema 4D asset browser, so that will be coming. And if I've done it, um, I will add it to the first link in the description. Um, but for now, just add a folder, and this is somewhere that Cinema 4D is going to actually pull assets into, um, unlike Blender or some others that just kind of remember where they are. Cinema 4D will actually pull assets into this database, so put it somewhere that you'll never touch it. And then you can come in here, and we can start building out an asset database. So if I just get rid of some of this default content, uh, which you can do by hitting this little button up here in the top right corner. It brings up your sorting tools. Uh, if I just bring up my database personally, you can see that I have some different categories made for different things. And one of these is lighting setups. And I've just kind of put this one in here as an example to go ahead and get started with. This is actually the lighting setup that I use in my default scene. And if you miss my video on default scenes, the card will be in the top right hand corner uh, to go and watch that. You can actually build out lighting scenes like this and save them so that they open by default with Cinema 4D so that like if you work on one kind of product and it's a lot of similar lighting, you never have to build that again. So now we're basically just gonna create a library full of these scenes. Um, so if I, well, let me bring that back up real quick. If I bring in a model from my asset browser and if I just kinda, sorry, wrong button. If I just kinda orbit my camera around this, um, you can see with this default lighting setup that I have, I'm gonna open my red shift render view dock this over here and then maybe i'll change my render settings to something square so that this is a little more even on both sides i keep typing 200. okay uh, so you can see this is the default lighting setup that i set up to open up 
whenever I open Cinema 4D. And you can save a lighting setup like this by just setting it up in your viewport. And I actually have mine uh, ticked off in the viewport display. But if I didn't, um, I could actually move around and see these lights uh, as they're kind of set up. But I prefer to have them off by default, as I believe many people would. But you can save a lighting setup like this by going to Window, Customization, Save as a Default Scene. And then whatever is visible over here in your Layers panel will open up by default every single time you open Cinema 4D. And so, like I said, if you have a uh, lighting setup that you use very frequently, you can just do that and be done. But if you want to go ahead and create a more in-depth kind of library for yourself, we can just come over to Window and Asset Browser, and we can come into our lighting setups. And if you haven't gotten your categories set up, I recommend just creating one called Assets that you kind of keep stuff that you use all the time. And then you can right-click on the Parent folder and click Create Category, and then it'll automatically create a category within this Assets thing. And I'll just call this uh, lighting sample. And I'll just delete this later. Uh, I can come into lighting sample and bring this whole null object that I have all these lights in. And I can drag this and drop it in here. And so then if I delete this lights uh, folder from my Cinema 4D scene, you can see over here that our lighting is gone. This is just the ugly default lighting that we get with the Redshift IPR. And I can bring this guy in over here. And my lighting is back. And so that is something that I can now use forever and ever. And it will even save things like my HDRI link tag that I have here from Grayscale Gorilla. Uh, it saved the target tags that I have that I can then just come in and add my target object to. Uh, you can really just, you know, save any kind of parameter uh, that you can imagine within the asset browser. And it's so good because Cinema 4D actually pulls it into a database. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't just remember where it is. So you can still like play with the files on your computer and do all that kind of stuff because Cinema 4D pulls all this data into its own folder. So now we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a different lighting setup. And so I'll basically just take you from start to finish from creating a lighting setup to having it saved like where you can use it forever. So I'm just gonna delete all of my lights here. And so I'm left with this horrid, ugly looking default lighting from Cinema 4D. And I'm gonna start by just positioning my camera. And you can obviously save cameras with this. If you, you know, work on a, a set scale, you can save cameras with this and do all kinds of stuff. And so I'm gonna start by adding in uh, a null object. And I'm realizing that I actually don't know where the null object is in the default Cinema 4D scene. So I'm going to hit Shift C and bring one in. I haven't used the Cinema 4D default desktop in a while, so I'm a little out of practice with that. I'm just going to call this uh, lighting underscore, well, maybe not underscore. I'll just call this lighting, uh, maybe just dark lighting. And we're going to create kind of a rim type lighting setup, I guess. Uh, so I'm going to start by coming into Redshift Lights Dome Light, which is Redshift's HDRI. And I'm going to come into Texture. I'm going to set this manually since not everybody has Grayscale Gorilla Plus or HDRI Link. If you have HDRI Link, just it's important to note that you can use that and it'll save everything all within the asset browser itself. So I'm just going to come into where my assets are. And I'm gonna come in to snag one of these uh, plus HDRIs. So this is a lot better start. Um, I'm gonna bring my exposure intensity up to like five. And I just wanna rotate this around until it's kinda like on top of my model or like the bulk of the lighting is 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and disable the background because I never in my life want a background on my HDRI. And so let's just say that like this is a good starting point that I want. I'm not sure that it necessarily is, but let's just say it is. I'll come into Redshift, Lights, bring in an area light. Uh, hold Shift to lock my, or snap my, my rotation segments, rotate it down. This is going to be my kind of top light, or my top down light. Uh, I'm going to make this guy long and skinny. So we're getting a lot of light on the sides of this at the moment. If I zoom out, you can see we've got like a pretty solid, uh, you know, start to a setup going on. I'm going to duplicate this area light, bring it down. I'm going to come into the object and change this into a disk and make it bi-directional. So this is going to be like my bottom light. I'm going to make this a lot wider. This is going to be a little more filling. I'm going to take my intensity down to like 20. Probably even less, actually. Let's see. Scale this guy down. Move it down. Take the intensity to like 10. And then I'm just, you know, obviously creating this for the tutorial. Drag this back. And let's say that this is kind of where we want to start. I need a fill light, obviously, so I'm going to go to Redshift, Objects, or uh, Lights. I'm going to make an area light, and I'm going to make it a sphere so that it kind of emits from all sides. It's obviously huge at the moment, so I'm going to bring it forward and up and continue to scale it down. I really just need this to be kind of filling on the front. And so you can see we've got a pretty even... Uh, lighting setup across this product at the moment. What I can do is go ahead and rename these. So this top one is my fill. Uh, this one, this first area light is my uh, top down. Top down. This bottom one is my bottom. And my dome light is obviously my HDRI. I can drag all of these in here and so now i just kind of have this dark lighting folder it didn't end up being super dark but that's fine uh, so then what we can do with this is set it to be invisible to the camera and come into window asset browser drag in our dark lighting and now this is something that we have to create uh, all these different sort of looks that we use consistently and we can start to build something a little bit like that Grayscale Gorilla Plus Light browser. It's just a great way to use the asset browser to create your own assets, which will get you hired and make you more efficient and all kinds of stuff like that. So I hope this has helped you out in one way or another. Uh, should just be a quick little video kind of giving some helpful skills. As I said in the beginning, uh, efficiency and being able to have stuff like this built out where you don't have to either spend hours creating it or spend hours looking for it is a very big thing for getting hired to do CG work. So uh, again, just wanted to kind of intro the concept. There will be a lot more videos about asset library building and such as I go through, uh, you know, making videos on the channel. But for today, we just took one more little step. I hope it helped you out and thank you for watching.